hello and welcome back viewers and subscribers of avg news uh compliments of the new year to all of you i hope you had a wonderful december holidays and you are as you are trickling back to work you are actually geared for a new and better year uh we are back again to update you on what is transpiring all around the african continent and we're promising that this year we're going to spread our uh coverage beyond all beyond south africa and zimbabwe that we have been concentrating on uh, now the main topical issue as we enter this new year uh, has been the issue of blocked uh, ids in south africa you remember that there has been a recent court ruling uh, which happened a few days ago where the department of home affairs was ordered to unblock uh, ids but now the rumor out there is that especially by those who acquired south african ids fraudland is that all those have been unblocked yes they might have been unblocked but there is a reason why they have been unblocked it doesn't mean that you are off the hook so we are going to use an interview that dr aaron Swaleti, the minister of home affairs of south africa uh, held with a local television station and we want you to hear on your own and for yourself what exactly is happening as the minister explains thank you you will realize that we were expecting this judgment because even before the, the court said we considered uh, that the business of blocking ids is not provided for in law it might be serving a good purpose as it does even the judge said so but the biggest problem is that there's no law in the country providing for it. So even before the court case, I have already given instruction to unblock people's IDs. And there was a total of 2.5 million. They have already unblocked 1.8 million of those IDs. Now 700,000 were remaining. Unfortunately, it was a bit complex because we have not finished investigations on them. Even the banks of the country through Sabric. The, 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 the structure that deals with risk in the bank said if those 700 are just unblocked willy-nilly without finalizing our investigation, the banks stand to lose uh, 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 17 billion rand, not 17 million, 17 billion, that's what the banks told us. So we went to the court to plead with the judge. If you look at our, 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 our prayers, we said we are aware we are conceding that this uh, 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 practice of blogging IDs is not provided for any law, but please give us some time so that we deal with the 700. And the judge gave us these 12 months. That's why we believe we are granted what we are asking for. So it's not a debate that we knew that what we are doing uh, is, is not in the law. We knew about it and we have already started correcting it. Now, coming to the issue of what is blocking IDs? Uh, Master, in 2005, when Home Affairs introduced a system called HANIS, Home Affairs National Information System, which is an electronic system that, that stores uh, 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 biometrics of people, photos and, and fingerprints, they started discovering a lot of discrepancies in these issues of IDs. So they started doing two things. Number one, uh, they started taking or flagging IDs. In other words, when they discover some mistakes on your ID, they flag it with the hope that wherever you appear with your ID, they will realize that your ID is flagged and send you back to home affairs to, 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 to rectify the mistake. It might have been a mistake of double IDs, or people having, I mean, two people having one ID. Sometimes it's a mistake where it shows that the man is married to two different women at the same time, uh, 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 not in terms of the by, by, uh, I mean, uh, I mean a sort of bygan, whereas they were not married in terms of the laws that allow polygamy. So all those were corrections. Now come the biggest one, where they believe that you acquired your ID fraudulently, then they block it and start investigations. What the judge said is you can't do that, and we agree with the judge, of course investigate first and follow Paja. Now I must concede, I must concede strongly 
uh, that officials in you know, home affairs for a long time we've been trying to teach them about this paja, you know, uh, provision of just administrative action, which is one of the central laws in the country. That before you take administrative action on an on an individual, you need to send them letters of audio, audio alteram patem. In other words, they need to be informed that we are going to take this action on you, and what you have to say about it. It's, it's just like when you suspend a person in government, even if they've committed the heinous act. Before you suspend them, you write them a letter of audio so that you hear what they are saying. And this is exactly what was leaking. That's why uh, the judge made the judgment that she has made. And one can appreciate your concession there, Minister Mutsualedi, but also what the judge has said was that while they also acknowledge that 1.8 million IDs have now been unblocked, and I think about 700,000 remain um, in the system that you've just brought up as well, to say those also still need to be investigated. What the judge also said was that not only did Home Affairs jump the gun, but even though you're unblocking these IDs, it's very little cons um, consolation for those who have been affected by these practices. Yes, of course, we knew that, that and we accept. We accept it, and as I'm saying, long before the court case said, we have already considered, I personally am the one who instructed officials that please, you can't block IDs even if it serves a good purpose for the security of the country. The problem is that there is no law that covers you. There is no law that is you. That's why they started uh, uh, this uh, process of unblocking. And of course, by the time they unblocked, uh, people have already had their IDs blocked for quite some time. So we do concede that uh, that's why the judge said they have to arrive at this judgment. And also the reason that it went to court finally, even after conceding, are two. The applicants were insisting that they want a judgment so that it gets recorded. It's not just conceding. They wanted it to get recorded so that it forms a precedence. But two, on our side, as I said, we're also going to plead for the judge to give us some time to deal with the 700. And we are happy that she has granted that because these 700, we don't just want to unblock them before finalizing because uh, the banks want us, nobody, even yourself. I don't think even yourself, you like the banks of the country to collapse like that. Remember that the applicants were asking the judge to declare the practice of blocking or, or flaking IDs unconstitutional. If you read the judgment, the judge did not do that. She said it's unconstitutional in as far as certain procedures are followed, and specifically PAJA, fair administrative action, or a process of investigating first before you block. So she did not rule out the issue of blocking. What she was asking, follow normal procedures. So all that Home Affairs have to do is to follow those normal procedures. Uh, we did discuss these issues, but uh, officials were panicking. They were saying, look, by if if a person has defrauded the ID, and uh, by the time you give them a notice that you are doing something, they might draft to the bank or another do another transaction, which we may regret. That's what they were saying. So, which means, while we are going to follow these procedures in terms of PAJA, we've got to go back to the drawing board and look how we redraw this law, such that we have got a law, I mean, how we redraft rather, not redraw, redraft this law such that we do have a law in the Identification Act or any other act that actually helped us. Fortunately, you are aware that we are having public consultations about the white paper, where we are saying we are going to really look at the Citizenship Act, the Immigration Act, the Refugee Act, and Identification Act. Somewhere when we, we re-enact those acts, we must place somewhere where this issue uh, uh, of, of defrauded IDs or, or something being wrong in our ID is covered for so that we don't work outside the law. Well, the general law in South Africa is that whatever decision you take, it must be in the best interest of the child. So it's not something that is, not, that is new to us. You have to take a decision that is in the best interest of the child. We have had situations where, as, as you might be aware, uh, uh, in, in schools, for instance, uh, that you cannot bar a child from going to school 
because they are not documented. And here we are talking about South African and non-South African children alike. There are those who are not documented for whatever reason, uh, and, 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 and it, we agreed, even with uh, Minister Njimo Seva, that we can't stop these kids from attending the school while we are dealing with the issues with their parents. And after taking that decision, the, the High Court in Kebeha also arrived at such a judgment that we cannot bar children from going to school, but we'll deal with the issues and deal with them later while they are at school. So as I'm saying, it's nothing new. The part that is very painful, and I don't want to hide it, Masa, is when a man has defrauded the country and got fraudulent documents, but arrive here, impregnate a South African woman, and have has a child, and we take action about that fraud, and the court says, no, you can't send this man away because he has already got a child in South Africa. So even on behalf of children, we do fraud, have fraudsters who stay in South Africa, even though their stay here is through fraud. But the court says because there's a child involved, charge that person for fraud, but you can't send them away. So we have already been doing that. It's a painful thing, but it's a law. It's a law, and we've got to follow it. Well, that was South Africa's Minister of Home Affairs, Dr. Alron Motswaleti, explaining the issue behind uh, the court ruling uh, on the blocked identity documents in South Africa and also how this affects uh, the children whose parents might find themselves having their IDs blocked in as far as schooling and registration is concerned. So please don't forget to subscribe to this channel, like this video and share it. Thank you.